this episode of a complete web workflow from beginning to end. I'll just show you through the kind of software and the settings that I use every day for creating websites. Um, generally, I found it to be the best for speed wise and just efficiency. Uh, so the actual code editor that I use is called Sublime Text. I use Sublime Text 3. Uh, you can get Sublime Text for actually for, fr for free actually. It's about $70 uh, dollars if you do want to buy the full version, but there is an unlimited pre trial just to see if you like it and how you get on with it. Uh, generally, the best uh, thing about Sublime Text is actual packages that you get for it, like plugins. Um, so if you want to get that installed, just head over to this link here or just search Sublime Text Package Manager. Uh, it's pretty simple, you just copy this bit of text in to the console of Sublime Text and that's installed. When you get back in there then, you've got the Package Manager to add packages and discover packages. Um, so I'll take you through the ones that I actually use package wise. Uh, first of all, Advanced New File. It's a great little uh, plugin for creating files very easily in, a, in directories and paths that you want without going to Finder or doing it through Terminal or anything like that. You literally just type in, I'll show you at the bottom here. So I press Command, Alt and N and you'll see at the bottom down here. If I wanted to create a new file, say at the folder path called um, Includes, and I wanted to create a file called head.php it would just create that file, even if includes directly didn't exist, it would create that directory, and then instead of that, it would create our header PHP file. Yeah, so that's great for that. Um, next is bracket highlighter. This just helps you see your nested kind of code in like CSS and PHP, see where it begins and ends. Emmet is a great package for um, HTML and CSS in general, it helps you very quickly get HTML written, so we can do things like this. Uh, this may not make sense at the moment, but you see, as soon as I press tab, how uh, if we set the syntax to HTML, it transforms this bit of text here when you press tab into all that. Basically, what you do is you write it, write it basically like you would with CSS. So we're saying we want a UL with an ID of nav. Inside of that, we want an ally with an item of dollar, meaning that it gets the actual ID times by five. Uh, then inside of that ally, we want an A link with the item class of dollar, which will again be the ID you'll see. Um, so class item one, item two, inside of that is the item two. Um, that may seem a bit confusing, but at a basic level, you can just do things like that. So you want a UL inside of that, an ally, five of those, and very quickly got like that, instead of having to type UL, ally, ally, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, so that's Emmet has huge amounts of things like that. There's a website, just emmet.io. Uh, there's loads of examples on here, and when you start using it, you'll you'll never look back, definitely. And the next package, um, Free Dawn. That's the actual um, theme that I use in the color scheme. Uh, I'll I'll put my Sublime Text settings in the show notes below. Uh, I got the SCSS. Uh, plug in just to help with the syntax we use sidebar enhancements helps us have a really nice sidebar for extra options like opening the files and creating new files when we have a project added uh, my theme is actually flat flat flatland uh, for the overall tabs and that kind of thing again that'll be in the show notes and trailing spaces just helps with finding various extra spaces that may be added throughout your code it just helps you see what, where they shouldn't really be you can, double click them get rid of them or you can save and they'll be automatically deleted uh, so that's it for sublime really um, HTML5 will always be the technology we'll be using for the website so using some of the latest elements and for the um, actual website build and the form elements for validation and those kind of things SAS is the actual technology or language we're using to write our CSS uh, SAS again is great if you haven't used it we can use things like variables for assigning colors and creating our framework very easily. Um, the best explanation really is just on the, the sas-lang.com uh, website. And there's some great examples on here. And if you haven't already got it installed, it tells you how to install it via the command line and window or on Windows and Mac and everything. Personally, I use um, CodeKit, which is a great piece of software for helping you to compress your SAS and your JavaScript and compile your images down to a lower file size. Uh, you don't have to use it. Um, but it's only about twenty dollars, something like that. It's well worth it. Saves you so much time. Uh, and then the next piece of software, our code kit would be Chrome, just our browser. Well, my browser, personal choice. 
Um, also be testing our website of course on Safari, Firefox, Internet Explorer, those kind of things. Ghost Lab is uh, another piece of software we'll be using to test the website on my local network for things like iPads and iPhone tablets just to see how it responds and uh, does that kind of thing across various devices. We'll be using MAMP because um, we're using a Mac for our local hosting for PHP side of it. Uh, if you're on Windows you can obviously use uh, the LAMP network. Again, to install this is very easy. Just type in MAMP or LAMP if you're on Windows. Um, it's a, a free download for the uh, normal version. There is a paid version which I actually use. Uh, we'll go into why I use the paid version in one of the later episodes. Uh, Xcode again, we'll just use it as our iOS simulator for the iPhone. Um, give a rough guide of see how it, how the website is responding. Uh, the FileZilla will be our basic FTP to actually put the website live on our server when we're ready. Image opt in another piece of software that is free just to help further compress our images down and save some space. Um, again, just Google that. It's a free download for Mac. Uh, show hide hidden files. It's actually a little bit of software that I created myself um, for helping us see some of the hidden files that we don't normally see on Mac. So things like the HD access file, or just as a quick sample, see on my desktop here, I can, uh, this .ds store. I can currently see it. If I don't want to be able to see that kind of hidden file that you can't see by default, I can click my app down here and. Source tree will be our software that we use for version control, um, so that we can you know make changes to a website, see what has changed, um, what kind of problems. If you haven't used version control, it's a, it's a big topic to get into. As uh, so outside of the scope fully of this um, this video series, but we will touch on it and show you the basic levels of it. Uh, other than that, if you weren't interested, my setup I'm using is MacBook Pro 15 inch uh, Retina display. With that, I'm using an LG 29 inch monitor, which is my, which is why you might think the uh, video looks a, bit, a little bit of a strange size. Uh, you can see here, so that's the MacBook, and then this is my widescreen monitor. So when I record, you only actually see this much of the screen, like 1920 by 1080, because the screen is actually 2560 by 1080. And then if I put that on this size screen on YouTube, uh, we'll just get black bars and it wouldn't look great. So you're only really seeing a little section of my screen. But it is a great screen for coding because you can have you know one, two, and three code editors all open at the same time very easily. Uh, other than that, I'm using the Magic Trackpad um, instead of a mouse. I find it a lot better. You can do all different types of shortcuts very quickly with your you know fingers. Uh, the numerical keyboard, and I'm recording on a Yeti microphone. Um, <laughs> the Yeti microphone and the Apple Magic Trackpad don't really go great together, which is why you can probably hear a lot of clicking. <laughs> Sorry about that, um, but other than that, that's like kind of software and the setup. Um, if you haven't used all of these things before, you, you probably should get a little bit more familiar with them. Just read the basic website uh, instructions, get them installed, and then in the next video, then we'll start on the actual file structure and getting it uh, started. We'll see you in the next one.